Alright, so I thought it was about time that I returned to doing Tesla Core videos. Because you know it, and I know it, it's been too long. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to make a new secondary. Now this is one of the other ones that I used. This one's about 500 turns. It's about 5 centimeters wide and about, um, about a foot long, I guess. This one, the new one which I'm going to wind the secondary on, I'm going to use the same wire as this, which is on this spool here. There's plenty of it. Well, it should be enough anyway. That's about 7 centimeters in diameter and about, I don't know, 13 inches long, I think. I don't need to be exact. So this had 500 turns on it. I might be able to get 700 turns on this. I don't know what the resonant frequency is going to be, but we can measure that. I will say, using a saw like this to cut plastic, well, uh, it does work, but you don't get a very nice edge. I am currently in the process. Okay, and the coil is finished. Look at that. So I'm going to test its resonance frequency, but first... Let's see what the resonant frequency of this coil is. And this is the circuit that I'm going to use. And he you she circuit, show you can see how it works. Uh... So the basic setup is we've got a CD4046 chip set up as a high frequency oscillator. This is going to adjust the frequency. Then there's two transistors here, just two tier 92 transistors to buffer the output of the chip. Buffer the output of the chip. And the output of that is going into the bottom of the coil, which is also going into channel one of the oscilloscope so we can measure what's going into the coil. And looped around the coil is this loop of wire which is just being used as an antenna so we can measure the output of the coil. And yeah, that's connected to the scope in a rather how you doing way, but should still work. So, I'm going to go through the entire range of frequencies that this circuit can do, and we get a huge amount of RF coming off this coil, which this loop of wire is going to pick up. We see a huge output on the scope, we'll know we've hit resonance. Okay, about to power on, let's hope nothing blows up. Excuse the glare, stupid sun. But anyway, let's power this on and hope nothing blows up. And we got nothing. Oh. One of the wires has come out. Supply wire. Let's just put that in. Okay, now we've got something. So, this is what's going into the coil at the base. Right there. Ignore this chip, that's nothing to do with it. But every breadboard should have a Z80. So, that's what's going into the coil. And being picked up by this loop of wire, we've got that. Which tells me we're nowhere near the resonant frequency of this coil. So, I'm going to start adjusting the frequency. And let's see what the scope says. And we got one there, but I don't think that's the fre resonant frequency. Let's go up a bit more, and uh, okay, that's about as high as we can go. Okay, let's start going down in frequency. There's that little peak again, but that is not the resonant frequency. Oh, there's something. I wouldn't celebrate yet, though, because although we are getting a lot of output here, look at this compared to this. This is way higher than what we've got here, so uh, we're put, I'm putting in about 470 kilohertz into the coil, and we're getting, um, scope doesn't even seem to want to measure it. Let's see if I can move that a little so we can actually see what the frequency is. So I'm putting in about 470 kilohertz, and the coil is putting out about 1.42 megahertz, and that could be the resonant frequency of the coil. The only reason it's doing that is because we're at a subharmonic right now. So I'm just going to make a couple of little changes to this circuit. I'm going to put in a small capacitor so we can get up to higher frequencies, and we'll see what that gives us. 
Okay, so I've now changed that 68 picofarad capacitor to a 22 picofarad. So this is going to oscillate at much higher frequencies now. Let's connect up our power supply. Our 13.8 volts. Alright. Now I'm going to start twiddling the knob to adjust the frequency and let's see what we get. We get something. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll put that on 20 volts per division. Right, so. Adjusting the frequency again. Let's see what we get. Oh, yeah. Huge resonance. And it's interfering with my speakers. So when we're in resonance. That must be throwing out a whole heap of RF. Yeah, like I was saying, that must be throwing off a whole heap of RF. Because this is over there. Speakers over there. When I get any resonance. Now, just out of curiosity, let's see what voltage we're getting out of that. Well, so we got... On this wire here... Going into the scope, we got 110 volts on that wire. Although I think that's peak to peak, though. I don't know if that's. Is that peak to peak? Mm. Yeah, it is peak to peak. Alright, let's put a top load on this thing. Currently, without a top load, the resonant frequency is about 1.5 megahertz. As we can see on the scope there. So let's see. Uh, this will be a top load. It's metal. It qualifies as a top load. So that should lower our resonant frequency. So let's adjust the oscillator and see what we get. So, yeah. oh, that's even stronger. So it's now lowered it to about 1.16 megahertz. And now look how much output we're getting. We're getting about 139 volts on this wire. That is just crazy. Now I wonder, with the amount of RF this coil is putting out, and the amount that's being picked up by this wire, and the amount that my speakers are picking up, I wonder if we can light a fluorescent light bulb. Or rather a compact, for compact fluorescent. Alright, so you'll have to excuse the rather shoddy camera angle. But my tripod's broken, so I've had to improvise. Also, I've tried to block out as much of the annoying sun as I possibly can, so if we do get any light out of this, we'll be able to see it. And I wouldn't be surprised if we do. So, I'm just going to hold this right near the coil, and start adjusting the frequency. Not if I was adjusting it the right way. Oh! There we go! Induction! Wireless power transfer! Alright, let's try that without a top load. We just adjust the frequency again. I think we're going to need to go up a bit. Oh yeah, it totally works. My speakers are making all kinds of weird noises now. Sounds like a radio. So you might have noticed that all throughout that last test I was constantly adjusting the frequency. That's because these coils are so sensitive to just about everything. Humidity in the air, where you place it, your proximity from the coil, even where I have this wire, can adjust its re resonant frequency. And if I put my hand near it, 
So that drops right off. I figure just by doing that, I've lowered its resonance frequency because I've added a little bit of capacitance. So I'll put my hand there again, I'll use my other hand, and I'll just lower the frequency of the oscillator. And we're back in resonance. Take my hand away, and it's back to where it was earlier. But I know what you're saying. That's all well and good, but, um... What about the big coil you made? Well, we're about to test that now. Alright, so here we are, about to measure the big coil. I have no idea what its resonant frequency is going to be, because... Well, I just don't know. Hopefully it's going to not be in the megahertz range. So, plugging in. And we got nothing out of either thing this time. Oh, okay. Output's not connected. I'll just connect it in there at the base of the coil. And, um, hmm, shouldn't be doing that. Don't know why it's jumping around like that. It's kind of, oh, my ground's come off as well. Let's just get that back in there. Let's just get that back in there. Right, now that looks nice and steady. So I'm going to start adjusting the frequency. First I'm going to go down and see what we get. There we are. We've got output. It's at 783 kilohertz. And the speakers are really whistling away. Of course, this is without a top load, so I don't know what it's going to be if I put a top load on that. And I've got absolutely no idea what I could use as a top load to put on this coil. Okay, so I've done a little bit of scavenging in my shed and I found a couple of plastic wheels. And I've done a little calculation. Plastic wheel plus tin foil equals top load. Okay, this is starting to look a bit more like a Tesla coil now. You may have noticed that I didn't put the top load straight on the coil. I put a little spacer in there just to separate those two. Now, I am a little bit concerned about just how much voltage this wire is going to pick up. I've also put the 68 microfarad capacitor back in. I mean picofarad capacitor back in so we can get the lower frequencies so I'm gonna start lowering the frequency until we hit resonance whoa just look at that okay yeah we're picking up about 143 volts on that wire so yeah I'm not gonna put any more power than this into it in this test. So, anyway, we can say that the resonant frequency of this is about 638 kilohertz, roundabout. And yeah, I'm quite happy with how this coil turned out. So in the next video, this is going to be connected up to a proper Tesla coil circuit. And we'll see how well it performs. But that's it for now, so until next time, goodbye.